In this video, we're going to be looking at graphing uh, nonlinear functions. So, one of the big things we want to remember is the little acronym IHOT over to help us remember how things work. So, we have IHOT, that means things you see on the inside will affect you horizontally. You do the opposite of what you see, and it affects the domain as opposed to over things that you see outside the function will affect you vertically you do exactly what you see and it affects the range so we're going to start with the first guy here and the first guy is f of x equals the absolute value of the quantity x plus 2 minus 6 now keep in mind this is absolute value so we know the shape should be some kind of v-shape like this and we need to find the vertex so the opposite of the inside is a negative 2 so that means I'm going to the left 2 the minus 6 on the outside tells me I'm going down 6 so left 2 down 6 is my vertex that's my key point and once I've gone left 2 and down 6 I don't really need these guys anymore I just need to put this shape here for my absolute value. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to, I want you guys to see that this is my new origin. If there's any way that you can kind of block out the original set of axes, you'll be in good shape. So if this is my new origin, I'm going to draw the absolute value based off of this guy. There's no stretch, there's no compression. It's understood to have a 1 in front, so from here, up 1, over 1, and so on. So I get all of these nice points, and I can do that on the other side here. Remember that there is a, a line of symmetry for absolute value functions. And that goes right through the vertex here. So here is your... absolute value function. Make sure you put arrows at the ends because it does extend forever in both directions. Alright, let's look at the second one. The second one is g of x equals 1 fourth x squared minus 2. So when I think about the shape here, the square tells me that it should be a parabola. The minus 2 tells me that I'm moving down two units, and the one fourth tells me that I have have a compression. So first thing is to find the vertex. The original vertex would have been right here at zero zero, but we're going down two, so it's going to be located right here. And this will act as our new origin. So remember how we did the squaring function. We counted this off. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. If I were following the rules for squaring, 1 squared would be 1, 2 squared would be up 4, 3 squared would be up 9. But I'm not doing that. And the reason I'm not doing that is because I've got the 1 fourth here. So I've got to do a fourth of that. So a fourth of 1 is 1 fourth. A fourth of 4 is 1. A fourth of 9, and you can think about this as doing 9 over 4 so that's going to give you 2 and a quarter so 1, 2 and a fourth 4 squared is 16 so 16 over 4 is just 4 5 squared is 25 25 over 4 is 6 and a fourth so here I would have been up 25 normally but now I'm just up 6 and a fourth so four, five, six, and a fourth. I think we have room for another point. If I do six, six squared is 36. 36 divided by four, that you see out here in front, is nine. So it means I'm going to be up here. If I go out one more, I think I'm going to be off the page, so let's uh, stop here. You have this axis of symmetry, so reflect these back over. So here's the one fourth, the one, two and a fourth, four, six and a fourth 
nine. And you make your nice parabolic shape here. Remember, this is a parabola. It curves. It is not made up of straight segments. So there's your parabola. Well, let's move on here. Let's see what happens with number three. Now, number three is another parabola, and the reason I know this, other than the fact that I made this up, is you've got a square here. So this is a parabola, but notice you have a negative in front. So the negative and the square are going to cause you to have a parabola that opens upside down. And then we see how it's been shifted. We do the opposite of what's on the inside, so we go to the right, three, we do exactly what we see on the outside, which is up five. So right three, up five is the location of our vertex. Right three and up five. And again, just like in all of the other problems that we do, I'm going to let this guy act as my new origin, a new set of axes. Now this is opening upside down, so I'm going to put the numbers up here on top. I'm just going to count these off. 1, 2, 3, and so on. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. That's going to be a little bit off the page, but we do know this. If I put a 4 here, going all the way down here would be 14 units. So 16 is somewhere right about there. So we kind of know where we're aiming. Reflect these points back over. And again, you know we're going to end up somewhere down here. And now you just are going to graph the parabola. It's one of those things that just takes practice. I don't know what you're talking about. This isn't the real test. Not the test that you die for. I mean, it's just practice, man. Practice. All right, let's see about number four. Number four, oh, see number four, it's got a square root. Now, the square root guy looks like this. He's at the origin, but then he kind of goes out like this, like a half sideways parabola. Now, notice on the inside here, he's been shifted to the left three. And he's got the two here, so that's going to be a stretch. It's going to be a vertical stretch for us. So we go to the left three. And there's my base point. And again, just like all the other guys, it's going to be a new set of axes for me. Now, remember the square root, we're only looking at having numbers that were going to be nice for us. So, 0 is good, 1 was good, 2 not so much, 3, 4 is good, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, these numbers are counting from my new origin. Okay. Now the square root of 1 is 1. The square root of... Excuse me, that's it. Yeah, and the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 would be 3. But I don't have those. That would be the old original guy if it was like this. But we've got a 2 in front, so it's going to double these. So the square root of 1 is 1 times 2 is 2. The square root of 4 is 2. Doubled is 2. The square root of 9 is 3, times 2 is 6, so it's 6 units from this new baseline. So it's still going to look like a square root, just a little bit, a little stretch like this. A little stretch from the original guy. Alright, number 5 is a cubing function. We see the 3 here, so I expect this guy to have a shape that looks like this. Okay. Now, what have I done with this guy? Well, according to what I have here, this guy is going to the right one unit and down two. So let's see what happens with this. If I go to the right one and down two, I'm going to be right here. Now this guy doesn't have a vertex, but again, we're going to be using 
his key point that was located at the origin as uh, the base point, how I move everything. So the key points here would have been 0, 1, and 2. And I use the fact that it's a cubing function, so 1 to the third is 1, 2 to the third is 8, so 8 units up is right here. Now there is some symmetry, it's like rotational symmetry, origin symmetry, about this point. So 1, 1, reflect that about 180 degrees is negative 1, negative 1. Instead of 2, 8, it's going to be 2 over here and then down 8, which is going to end up taking us off the graph about right there. Now for the cubing function, he doesn't go straight through here like that. That's so wrong to do that. He's horizontal right there in the middle. Now I make it a little more exaggerated than it really is. It's only instantaneously horizontal at that base point. But I do this so that we can actually draw the graph correctly. So curve it up as though you're drawing a parabola, but just a little bit steeper of a parabola. And do the same thing coming back down here. And that's the shape of x to the third shifted to the... Now why don't I go to the left one? Why don't you guys tell me that? 